Um, Prigozhin posts a new audio after three hours of silence, claims Wagner has crossed all state borders and is entering Rostov. So far, the claims about an alleged march column have been, haven't been backed by video. We crossed the state borders in all places. Now we are entering Rostov units of the Ministry of Defense, or rather uh, the conscripts who were thrown to block our roads, stepped aside, Prigozhin claims. We are not going to fight children. We are only fighting professionals. But if someone stands in our way, we will destroy everything. We are extending our hand. Do not spit in it. We are going forward till the end, he added. So a mutiny or a putiny seems to be happening uh, with, you know, uh, the Wagner group, the mercs, the mercenaries. Uh, now, what's really funny about the situation is every aspect of this is a mid-off, Okay. Every actor involved is bad. The only people that are involved that are not bad are just the civilians and the people who are like unwittingly forced into battle. Okay? That's it. Um, Felix Biederman uh, says, Russia's Wagner mercenary chief Yevgeny Prigozhin said that the Kremlin's rationale for invading Ukraine was based on lies concocted by his perennial adversary, the army's top brass. There was nothing out of the ordinary happening on February 24th. The defense ministry is trying to deceive society and the president to, and tell us a story about how there was a crazy aggression from Ukraine and that they were planning to attack us with the whole of NATO, says Yevgeny Prigozhin, uh, the Russian Wagner mercenary chief. Felix Biederman says, holy shit, there isn't a serious country in this entire part of the world. Mongolia or the Ottomans need to remobilize and bring the entire region under a new order. I agree. When you're losing the battle and start talking about honor and loyalty at the bloody end, and you get that mercenary stare. <laughs> That's such a good fucking meme, dude. Anyway. Funny how this is happening as the Ukrainian counteroffensive fails and the Pentagon magically finds six billion. Do you think this is due to just Russia fucking them over? Do you think there's some under the table non prosecution for higher ups in the Wagner group and maybe some dollars from the West? The Wagner shit is not just a mutiny, it's a call for civil war. Prigozhin called for the military forces to switch sides and also said the same for civilians who want to join. He said they will provide them weapons from armories that they will loot. Yeah, your favorite country is collapsing. Why aren't you mad? What? <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I famously am a big time Vladimir Putin supporter. Um, I can I can see this being I have no idea, dude. I, I just don't know. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Okay, I don't know. Truth lol? Yeah, no, I love <laughs> I love I love schizophrenic chatters because they've just like made up shit in their minds and they believe it so thoroughly. Like they're like definitely, dude. Hassan is I'm in here. I'm I'm gonna go on the Hassan Ivy broadcast today to watch him be so mad that like the fucking Nazi private military group <laughs> is <laughs> Trying to start a civil war in Russia against the other ethno nationalist, uh, stupid uh, uh, government of Russia that we basically designed and built. You know what I mean? Oh, man. Oh, what will I do? No, my perspective on this has not changed and will not change. They're having a fucking mid off, always. Okay, they're always having a mid off and I don't know what the fuck is going on half the time. Okay. Um, Chatter found this journalist claims videos are real. A senior American intelligence visual tells me both for Ukrainian and US intelligence is a watch and see if they destroy themselves sort of situation. They said it's going to be a long night of watching how this develops, said Wagner is mobilizing and heading headed towards Moscow. Um, 
And the OSINT Andes are saying that sources within the Wagner... Wait, was there fucking dead bodies in those? Oh, I can't see, but anyway, there's nothing so far. Sources within the Wagner PMC group are claiming that a missile attack launched by Russian forces have targeted one of their field camps in Ukraine, resulting in significant casualties. The leader of Wagner, Yevgeny Prigozhin, has just stated that he believes the attack was ordered by the Russian Ministry of Defense. Americans need to just stop looking at Eastern Europe. Nothing good happens there. Thank you. I agree. That has been my perspective as well, which is, I don't care. Um, fuck you, Hassan. Why fuck me? I don't care. I don't want the war to continue. I, I hope it stops. And I hope civilians stop dying. To give context to what's happening, okay, here, we'll... we'll We'll get more information from our Georgian correspondent, okay? He says, to give context to what's happening, Prigozhin released a video earlier today talking about how the invasion on 24 was bullshit. Later that day, rumors start spreading that Putin is ordered for him to be arrested. Prigozhin releases a video showing that what he alleges to be a Russian MOD airstrike on a Wagner camp, and then an hour later, sends these messages out and basically calls for a civil war rebellion. <laughs> yeah, I mean... He has major issues with Shoigu in particular. This isn't a Western conspiracy. Prigozhin has been hinting at this all along. This isn't all of a sudden. I mean, I don't understand why the guy... I don't understand why the guy who's like, let's use the, like, rapist prisoners uh, uh, as in the front lines is like, this war is bullshit. Like, what's funny about the situation is... Remember, when I said they're having a mid-off, I mean, like, these are all fucking awful people, right? So when liberals go, when liberals post shit like this, what they fail to recognize is, like, these guys are fucking awful. Like, don't bother Vladimir. I will burn down Moscow. Like, they're, they're like, getting fucking excited. They're getting excited at the prospect of, like, again... The rapist pedophile military brigade, like, that do insane shit. Like, these are the same people that they were talking about. These were the same people that they were t talking about how, like, psychotic they are every time they wanted to, like, move the conversation away uh, from... Uh, every time they wanted to move the conversation away from, like, the 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 potential Nazism within like Ukrainian ranks, they would go, well, Wagner is a bunch of fucking, uh, Wagner is a bunch of Nazis, which is true. And I use that same example over and over again. But like, <laughs> it's definitely the war criminal brigade turning on the other war criminal leadership in a country that is effectively doing war crimes. But I guess they have a, Difference in opinion on how to do the war crimes? Like, I don't know. Like, uh, he's, he's going <laughs> to... They're going to they're gonna be like, listen, Mr. President, <laughs> Vladimir Putin, I don't like the type of war crime you're making me do. It's not good. I like my own kind of war crime. Another thing to consider is that he did not attack Putin in any way. He says this is his crusade against the RUMOD. He alleges that nothing else will change. He just wants to clean things up in the MOD and then resume the war. But obviously, the Russian government is not cool with this. Yeah, but Shoigo is an extension of Vladimir Putin. That's why he's in the position that he's in. So it doesn't even fucking matter. Saying that he hates the Russian MOD means that he's saying that he hates Vladimir Putin. Because the Russian MOD is Vladimir Putin. Their entire job is to uh, be an extension of whatever his needs are. Whatever he wants to do. So that's what's going on. Uh, he is... You know, he, he's just, I don't know. He's just doing, they're just doing the thing. Uh, CNN is covering it right now here. Okay, we'll take a look at it. Accusing so yeah, the there's a possible coup. Of tricking the country into an unprovoked invasion back in February last year. On February 24th, nothing extraordinary happened. But the Ministry of Defense was trying to deceive the public to deceive the president and say that there was insane aggression. On I think there's a higher likelihood that these dudes, the mercs get, uh, you know, the mercs turn heel. I, I think, I don't know anything. I don't know what's going on, but I feel like, I feel like it, the, the higher likelihood 
is that these guys get, uh, uh, you know, maybe a little bit of funding and decide, uh, maybe we'll just help out on the other side or something. You know what I mean? Little Russian well, January 6th. Moscow, the Russian capital has been placed on alert, while Yevgeny Prigozhin, in his latest address on social media, has said that his forces are entering the southern Russian region of, of Rostov. Um, in his the take is basically that they, Rostov, MOD, have been lying and deceiving Putin Ukraine. this whole time. And he says it is his intention uh, to uh, go on, in his words, until the end. Erin. All right. Thank you very much, Matthew. Uh, let's go straight to the White House now, because these developments are now front and center there as well. Jeremy Diamond is out front there. And Jeremy, how concerned is the White House about what is literally unfolding as we speak in Russia. I mean, Matthew talking about Prigozhin saying uh, that he's going into Rostov on Don, a Russian city. We don't know in what capacity, what's happening, but this is changing minute by minute. Yeah, there's no question about it. This is a fast moving situation with massive geopolitical implications. And so obviously the White House very, very closely monitoring this situation. I'm also told that uh, officials are being very cautious uh, about any kind of statements that they put out because of the fast moving nature of what is happening. But I can tell you, Aaron, that President Biden has indeed been briefed on this unfolding situation in Russia. And I have a statement from the National Security Council spokesman, Adam Hodge, who says, quote, we are monitoring the situation and will be concerned consulting with allies and partners on these developments. Now, as I mentioned, this is a situation with so many implications here. Uh, obviously, in the war in Ukraine, we know the key role that the Wagner Group has played uh, in helping Russia with its military invasion of that country. Uh, but beyond even the war in Ukraine, you know, Russia is a nuclear power. And so whatever happens, any kind of power struggle is obviously going to have massive geopolitical implications. Now, the U.S. has long monitored tensions between the Wagner Group and the Russian Ministry of Defense. We have heard that directly from the podium here at the White House. But wait, hold on. My sources on the ground are saying Putin has responded by sending this to Rostov. Wagner has no chance. Wait, hold on. Oh, it's over. It's over. No, it's over. That's it's done. No, he will. He's been dealing with coups for 25 years. He's going to go in there and say, where is the Punani? Me want the Punani. Me want the punani. I've been dealing. I've been a Russian man for 25 years. Where mama at? Where mama at? Where the Wagner mama at? Steps are ours. It's Jover. It's Jover. Okay, like this will be done. This will be done by sort of by uh, war next is morning. Clear. What do you even make of all this? Well, what that really describes, Aaron, is just this element of extreme chaos. Where babushka at? I mean, it's been described that these events are rolling very very quickly but what it tells you <laughs> major general james spatter is that you end up with circumstances like this when you have strong men when you have these autocrats and everybody pledges their loyalty to the individual this is not a constitutional crisis what this is is a two strong men putin and prigozhin that have allowed this strategic lunacy to take place so looking at this from the outside in what are all the other global powers thinking as has just been discussed in mm. terms of how they think this is going to play out and what the longer term implications are? Look, if, if Prigozhin gets apprehended and somebody pops him in the head, what does that mean in terms of Putin's longevity? Right. Nobody what does knows. that mean? I mean, they're now saying that the, at least the security services in Russia, as you talk about these disparate groups, are, are imploring Wagner fighters to detain and turn Prigozhin in. Now, who knows what happens? If, if something like that happens, does that then become something much bigger? I, I, it's impossible to know. Oh, this is internal, internal fighting. And I mean, we, I don't know that we can predict this with any level of certainty. I hate to sound too cynical, but why not? I mean, this could be some drama that's playing out that enhances Putin's stature at the expense of Prigozhin that's already been pre-baked. Prigozhin goes away, but he man manages to live to fight another day in some means. We simply don't know right now, but we've seen this. This is a failed military with failed leadership. Putin has allowed that to take place. He's inserted this Wagner group to try to unscrew. Worth noting that Prigozhin is more right-wing than Putin. That's like insane to think about. Both fucking suck, but I think Prigozhin would be more likely to carry out multiple genocides. Yeah, they're like, it, 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 again, it's a race to the bottom, boys. It's a race to the bottom.
very much. And we are going to stay with this breaking news that is developing uh, by the minute. Russia saying that it has upped its security posture in Moscow. Pogosian claiming his men have now entered a city in Why don't we just crowdfund to pay Wagner to Biden fight against Putin? Now watching, um, I love... I love liberals because they just like they do unironically say stuff like this, not realizing what the implications of uh, such a situation uh, would be like. Like we just we just said it, we just told you, like, dude, you guys like last week were openly uh, like liberals last week were talking about. How much of a fucking like rapist, genocidal freak the Wagner guys were, and how Nazi they were, and now this week they're like, but he hates Putin, so it's good now. It's like, no, they're bad. <laughs> they're both bad. I don't know what is gonna happen. It's like again, they're having a mid off. The best possible outcome of this mid off would be that they just like fucking fight each other so much that they, I don't know, can't. They're fighting each other so much that they can't fight in Ukraine, maybe. Uh, like, that would be good. And then Vladimir Putin magically decides, like, okay, I don't have enough resources to, to handle uh, the Ukrainian conflict at the moment. We're just going to have to deal with this internally. You know, let them fight type situation. But usually, uh, that kind of stuff doesn't fucking matter. Because... I don't know. I just. He's not even against Putin. All his messages are about Shoigu and Gerasimov. He does not even talk about Putin. I mean, it also doesn't even fucking matter because like. Um, uh, the, the, the Russian MOD is Putin's extension. He can say that he like hates how. Uh, uh, they've been lying to Putin and Putin is actually good, but uh, that, that still doesn't change the reality that like, for example, Shoigu is in the position that he's in, not because of his like excellence or military prowess uh, or his unique interest in woodworking. He's in the position that he's in because he's friends and homies with Vladimir Putin. You know what I mean? Yeah, but so is Prigozhin, their homies, lol. Yeah, I just don't know. I don't know what that... Uh, I, I mean, everyone is an extension of Vladimir Putin. <laughs> Dude, even uh, the, the fucking other hyper-nationalist uh, uh, CIA guy who like got poisoned like a million times, even he is like allowed to exist because of Putin. All opposition is controlled opposition even including ones that are CIA assets in Russia. Yeah, Navalny, yeah, that guy, the, the most poisoned man on the planet. <laughs> Putin runs the fucking show. Yeah, I think, I think he's pretending to fight only the MOD and not Putin for propaganda purposes. Yeah, the Communist Party of Russia isn't a real proletarian movement. Nope. <laughs> exactly. That's a great example of, of uh, Vladimir Putin's, uh, like, the extension of uh, power and what it represents. I don't know if I can watch any fucking Ukrainian uh, videos because oftentimes Ukrainian videos spell trouble for me for... Uh, many different uh, reasons. Usually they just straight up show like, you know, either the fucking Wagner dudes literally like cutting heads or whatever. It's like live leak. Ukrainian videos are all live leak. Oh, Russia on a heightened sense of alert after the FSB security service in Russia. Russian videos Wagner are all live leak too. Jenny Prigozhin of calling for an armed coup. Prigozhin tonight vowing retaliation after claiming that the Russian military killed a lot of his fighters in a strike. And he has also just announced that his fighters are entering the Russian region of Rostov, saying, quote, we will destroy everything that gets in our way. 
That's the very latest that we have. We will destroy everything that gets in our way as he is entering the Russian region of Rostov. Our national security reporter, Natasha Bertrand, has been covering this story closely and following the American response as it develops. And Nasha, Natasha, what more do you know? Yeah, Aaron, so U.S. officials are telling us that this kind of inflamed rhetoric from Prigozhin is actually much more serious than they've seen from him in the past. And importantly, it does not come after some kind of Russian military failure in Ukraine that he has been so critical of, but it comes after the, he has accused the Russian Ministry of Defense of actually ordering an airstrike on his troops inside Ukraine. So they are very concerned that he is really out for revenge uh, at this moment. And U.S. official did tell us that he believes that it is, quote, real and that U.S. officials are monitoring this very closely. Uh, you know, previously, they have, of course, looked at this relationship between Russia's Ministry of Defense and Wagner with a lot of fascination, because obviously there is a very intense power struggle that has been underway uh, between those two entities for quite some time now. Yeah. There was always a question of whether that would result in perhaps Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, giving Wagner Group and Prigozhin more power inside Ukraine. But U.S. officials now, you know, they are taking uh, what Prigozhin is saying and doing very seriously, and they're consulting with allies and with partners on what this could actually mean. Is it a real coup attempt? Is it something more uh, deceptive than that? Um, yeah. Right now, it is still really unclear, Aaron. All right. Well, Natasha, thank you very much. And of course, as, as she gets more, she'll bring it to us. Steve Hall's with me now, the former CIA chief of Russia operations. And Steve, from these various details that are coming in, uh, what do you read between the lines? What do you hear? I think Natasha's reporting, Erin, was, was really dead on. This, this is something different. This is in a different league. These three comments specifically that Prigozhin made saying, OK, look, you know, we need to get to Moscow. Uh, we need to march to Moscow and take care of the, you know, the, the, the bandits who, you know, who did these things to us, meaning his troops. He also said this is getting a little bit less play. He also said, look, there was nothing going on in Ukraine when we attacked. That's directly against what Putin said is, is well, certainly at the beginning of the war, but as, as little as a week ago. Yeah. Uh, you know, so all of this is really just in, in a completely different, uh, you know, it's, it's in a different category. The FSB is now involved, the most robust of the organizations, the security organizations that Putin himself used to be in. So, you know, now Putin's in this personally. It's going to be fascinating to see which way it goes. Yes. Yeah, so when you talk about Prigozhin also just saying, you know, moments ago when he said he's going to the region of Rostov, again, the Russian region, not Russian occupied. This is full blown Russian territory. We will destroy everything that gets in our way. Uh, as the FSB has called for, you know, fighters around him to detain him. What do you think Putin will, will do here? I mean, this is, and I, I know, you know, maybe he's not sure himself, but what, what is his, how significant is this moment for Putin and his retention of power? I think it's, it's extremely uh, important. It's an extremely important moment because he, certainly during Putin's, uh, Putin's regime over the past couple of decades, we have not seen anybody put this kind of pressure, say these kind of things, be allowed for a period of time to say the kind of things that Prigozhin has said. Most people get thrown into jail or exiled or worse. Uh, the problem that they've got with Prigozhin is, of course, he has an army. And so if the army follows him, now the FSB has an army too, but, you know, this, this could get very ugly and very unstable very quickly. And the Russians value stability above almost all else. Do you think, Steve, I mean, it's from, I mean, just the, the, the optics of it right now, armed vehicles on the streets of Moscow, they're talking about an up security pressure. They're breaking into to television, right? Prigozhin says he's marching there. He's in Rostov. He says he's going to destroy anything that gets in his way. I mean, do you think we're going to, I mean, how, even if it ends quickly and who knows what happens, but that you could real, truly see armed conflict, you know, Russia on Russia in Russia, I mean, a civil, a civil conflict? Well, the fact that we're seeing this reaction out of the Kremlin indicates that, that they at least believe that that could happen. I mean, you've yep. got, you know, armored personnel carriers moving through Moscow and you've got, you know, the FSB saying, hey, your own guys should detain, the Wagner guys should try to detain or stop Prigozhin. All those show that there's great concern in Moscow that that could, that could precisely be what's going on. That said, Putin still has a lot of levers on his side that he can pull to stop Prigozhin. But I don't think we can any longer rule out the possibility that, that that Putin is in serious trouble here. All right. Well, Steve, thank you very much. Uh, it just obviously so much uncertainty and chaos in this and appreciate your perspective and expertise. Thanks. Next, we're continuing to monitor the breaking news out of Moscow, plus more on the search for answers on the implosion of the Titan. I'm going to speak to a world-renowned explorer. Okay. I feel like they're... I mean, I feel like they're, they're, I don't know. 
Very likelihood that this could be a tactical deception. I don't know. Lukashenko and his family have boarded a private jet with an unknown destination. Government officials were seen fleeing Moscow. A 50-kilometer Wagner convoy is heading towards Rostov, and the regular army makes no attempt to stop them. The Russian army is surrounding the Duma building. I just... The, here's the thing. Don't say who cares about what's going on. Obviously, this has, like, important implications, potentially, in the, the war in Ukraine, right? Like, and that's... That's important it's it's going to you know a lot of lives will potentially be uh a, a lot of lives could potentially be lost uh in the short uh term and then some lives could be saved in the long term it's just like entirely dependent on what ends up happening but um it's uh, but but again a, a lot of this stuff is OSINT shit so i don't know how real it is and even with it's also 4 a.m in rostov right now so most people are sleeping info is going to be much slower um no shoigu asked wagner to sign a contract basically ending wagner and integrating them into the army pre-girl refused that's the tldr the big implication for us is the six thousand warheads in ru like this will have global implications for sure um depending on where it goes but even if it ends, even if it ends with, even if it ends with Vladimir Putin uh, dealing with uh, Wagner or the head of Wagner and like restructuring it and putting it under the MOD, or uh, which would be like the the least uh, different outcome than what how things have been so far. Uh, even if that's the case, that you know that's still going to be consequential. Uh, here, let's watch Wagner this. has issued what sounds like a declaration of war against his country's top military officials. Yevgeny Prigozhin posted an audio message today accusing the army of launching strikes on his own troops. In a separate video clip, he said that Moscow's invasion of Ukraine was based on lies by the military's leadership. His Wagner group spearheaded Russia's capture of the Ukrainian city of Bakhmut last month a battlefield success that has allowed him to criticize Moscow with impunity. Now, the main target of Prigozhin's tirade is the Russian defense minister. The defense ministry is trying to deceive the public and the president and tell a story that there was some crazy aggression by Ukraine and that together with the entire NATO alliance, they were planning to attack us. So the so-called special operation of February 24th was started for other reasons. Well, military analyst Marina Marone is with the War Studies Department at King's College London. I asked her what she thinks is behind Prigozhin's statements. Good evening. Well, it is interesting that Wagner has been silent for almost a month, and I mean Evgeny Prigozhin, and now he's coming out again. Uh, in between, we have seen um, accusations that apparently the Russian armed forces had attacked uh, Wagner troops, and one hostage has been taken, and now it seems a back-and-forth game. And I think, to a certain degree, the Ministry of Defense um, is going to show Wagner that it's not going to tolerate such behavior, even if um, Prigozhin himself has direct links to Putin. Mm -hmm. So I, I think we're going to see this um, power game for a while, but I don't think there will be a major escalation, because the Ministry of Defense also understands that it's a tool of the Kremlin and the tool of the Kremlin to keep the military in check, amongst other things. And therefore, Wagner or Prigozhin can allow himself to be as explicit as he is without any punishment. So if he's that important um, for Putin's war effort, what, if anything, can the Russian defense ministry do to, to put, you know, to check him out, to put him back? This is the equivalent of when U.S. generals would have quibbles about the TV, uh, on the TV about the Iraq war, the mainstream media, NATO war hawks are just painting it as a coup. No, it's not the equivalent of that. At all. The American military, for all of its fucking faults and failures, is significantly better run than the Russian military. It's significantly better equipped. It's significantly better run. Uh, the, the internal conflicts are, are oftentimes dealt with behind closed doors that's not even close stuff 
there are there are circumstances where there are circumstances where things uh are are very different in other parts of the world than the United States of America. There's there isn't like any example there isn't any contemporary western or contemporary uh American example of like a military a, a branch of the military like Blackwater guys are not you know driving tanks to the fucking White House okay it's not happening or yeah Blackwater I said it right it's Blackwater right back in line portugal well, carnation uh, revolution perhaps i'm just be, i'm talking uh, about america and the also Ministry like of in the last ten to silence um wagner the u.s generals way, are much more subservient to political them, branches they did start to act up under trump though violence yeah they acted up under trump be because they wanted to do like a reading of of gay books or whatever <laughs> not like not because they were if anything, if anything, they were they were like, oh, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Don't get us out of Afghanistan. We want to keep being in Afghanistan. Or there's a difference in opinion of like some people that want to get out of Afghanistan within the military and and uh, re, uh, I guess like reevaluate how to best use their resources. But it was never like this. It's not like this at all. And we will see on the battlefield, as I said, it's it, um, the Russians attacked the Wagner group. Uh, one soldier has been taken hostage. Now Wagner is claiming that the Russians has uh, have fired on their positions. So those kind of skirmishes we're likely to see, but I think mostly those things will be uh, settled internally. And I think uh, Prigozhin also benefits from going out and attracting uh, public attention and maybe his taunting is also useful for the MOD to take action. And we have seen that um, in the past six months, for instance, Wagner has taunted the MOD about the defenses after the loss of Liman and withdrawing from Kherson. And it seems like it's not the only reason, but it seems like it, it had some impact on the thinking, on the internal thinking. Progoshin also said in this video that the public, they've been lied to, that there was no NATO threat to Russia, no Ukrainian threat to Russia. Do we know, is this going to have any impact at all on the opinions or mood among ordinary Russians about this war? Well, I don't think that uh, Prigozhin has that power to influence the entire Russian population because the narrative, not just prior to the war, but for the past uh, at least 15 years has been that uh, NATO is preparing a color revolution inside Russia. So NATO has been this boogeyman for quite a while. And I don't think that one statement from Prigozhin will likely alter the views that, that have been persistent in the Russian population. Military analyst Marina Marone from King's College London. As always, Marina, we appreciate your time and your insights. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. I can give you a quick summary of what is happening if you want. Your Russian X subscriber. Wait, why X? Why not current subscriber? And you won't be able to give us the explanation because at the top of the hour, there's a three minute ad break and you'll probably be seeing an ad. Because I'm Russian, I can't subscribe. Well, okay, that's right. Also, you won't see ads anyway, because that is one benefit of being from Russia. But also, why are you asking me for permission? Just write it. You know I'm going to fucking read that shit. But anyway, at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. And unless you're currently in Russia, you will see those ads. With another exception. By subscribing for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime, or by getting gifted a sub from 34MKD50, who has gifted 7 million subs over the course of the past fucking week. Okay? Here's the three minute ad break now.
Please get deep into this. Vinny Koo happens. I'm not ready for the same anti-Russian shit that has happened over the last 20 years. You've been talking about literally everything which has happened in the world. But as soon as there's a bright spot for being anti-Russian, you start talking about it on stream. I feel offended, bro. Read that shit. What? Please get deep into this. If any coup happens, I am not ready for the same anti-Russian shit that has happened for the last 20 years. You think I'm anti-Russian? What am I? Am I... Am I Vladimir Putin's uh, blood boy or am I anti-Russian? Am I too pro-Russian? Like, what's going on? Sorry, thought you've been ignoring it. That's why I spammed. No. I'm anti-Russian. I'm anti-Ukraine. I guess technically I am anti-both. Let's be real. <laughs> All right, where's the ex subscriber? I want to I want to see what uh they have to say. Maybe they actually are watching ads at the top of the hour right now. You're anti-American too? I mean, that one actually does make sense. Like not American people. I myself am American. I don't give a shit about ads. Man, I was joking. Actually, but the thing is, in short, most of the patriot part of Russia doesn't believe Prigozhin went nuts. Believes that Shoigu could actually bomb Wagner's positions right now. Following the Prigozhin telegram, the Wagner group army goes into Moscow and the army lets them through. We believe if we believe Prigozhin's telegram. Okay. What else? What? That is not accurate at all, says Ditch Digger. You're anti everything but China? Okay, well, I do have a soft spot for, you know, fast traveling. Fast traveling by train. A video of eyewitnesses appear with a block road from the Moscow side of the Volgodon intersection in Rostovon. Can you give a quick summary if you want your Russian non subscriber? me okay the war in ukraine inside of the russian divided military as the ukrainian counteroffensive has got underway tensions and dysfunction have emerged among the russians directing the war That's awesome. That fucking vid got memed so hard in Russia. Shaigo, get awesome up. Bro, he looks like the, the guy from Breaking Bad, dude. Wait, this might be- Now that Ukraine is bringing the fight to the Russians, oh. what impact will it have on a leadership in Moscow that's already feeling the pressure? The infighting has actually started, uh, and it's only going to intensify. Inside Russia, the government is keen to project a sense of business as usual, even as the war starts to hit home. The Russian capital getting a first-hand sense of war after an alleged drone attack. Here, they're trying to ignore the Ukrainian counteroffensive unfolding hundreds of miles away. But within Russia's elites, cracks are starting to appear. Increasingly, I think the talk, and this is what I'm getting from whatever sources I am um, still in communication with, on the ground of the Russian elite, that they are definitely losing, haven't already lost confidence that this war is winnable, or that any of the aims, even though Putin has actually never 
uh, properly explained to the country what is it that he's trying to, to, to achieve, that this was a good idea and those aims, however vague they are, uh, can be achieved, uh, that Russia is on, on the march. I mean, the fact that it's Ukraine that's on the offensive is shaping the mood. And I think that realization is uh, sinking in uh, amongst the elite, both the technocratic elite, but also of the more militant uh, part, uh, you know, the Prigozhin, the Wagner groups, the, the radicals. Yevgeny Prigozhin is the leader of the Wagner Group, a private military organization whose brutal mercenaries have been called on. From the New York Times, Prigozhin has issued a new voice recording on the Telegram messaging platform. He says his fighters are approaching the city of Rostov-on-Don, which is in southern Russia near Ukraine, and adds, we are going farther. We will go to the end. There is no confirmation that Prigozhin's forces are actually approaching Rostov. So there's a, a lot of footage on Telegram, but... Uh, man, sure would have been fucking nice if there was still... I don't know, some outlets in, in Russia that were covering the news, but I guess Wagner has posted a video of Russian trucks. Hold on. Got to fucking log on to this shit too now. God damn it. God damn it. Hold on. Done by Putin to bolster Russia's severely depleted forces. But the collaboration between Prigozhin's militia and the Russian military establishment appears to be unraveling. The infighting uh, is, I think, has, has actually started uh, and it's only going to intensify. And he is turning on the, on the army. О том, что вы хозяева этой жизни, и о том, что вы имеете право распоряжаться их жизнями. What we've seen, the rants directed against uh, Sergei Shoigu, the Minister of Defense, and against the Commander in Chiefs, are very important because he is basically blaming them for being lukewarm. He's blaming Russian elite for not doing enough, and basically saying this is not the way uh, to fight an all-out war, which which he wants to see. I think that sense of the objectives of this war uh, were unclear from the very beginning and they're certainly unwinnable, uh, as in Russia is not going to get to Kyiv, is really sinking in. And, and Prigozhin, and as the elites, and Prigozhin is part of that elite, are starting to prepare for the moment where they will have to concede some losses of territory. What Prigozhin has basically been channeling from the beginning is that Russia needs full mobilization, it needs to bring martial law, needs to call this a war, not a special military operation. My sense is there is a real uh, intensifying of different factions around Kremlin and it's uh, fighting with each other. And this is out of the ordinary. I mean, Putin has always ruled through sowing conflict between his cronies, but he doesn't like this being, you know, spilling into the open, into the public space. And this is what has happened. And that actually undermines the sense of the elite as well, that things are going according to plan. Because if Prigozhin is allowed to attack and accuse the Minister of Defense and the command of the Russian forces of treason. It's now getting to the level where the question is, is Putin really in control of his own men? Depending on what Ukraine achieves, will or will not intensify a political process in Russia. So in that sense, what happens inside Russia politically will be determined by the success of this counteroffensive. The battlefield continues to shape politics in a way that we haven't seen since the Second World War. If Ukraine is successful, I think the infighting in Russia will intensify. I think Putin's position will start shifting. If Ukraine is not successful, however... If you really want to know what's going on, you should join random Russian Telegram propaganda channels. No, man. I, I refuse to do that. I'm good, thanks, but no thanks. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like, um, as far as I've read into it, and I don't want people to fucking jump down my throat, but the Ukrainian counteroffensive has not been like fully launched or has been launched, but it hasn't been as successful 
or maybe it hasn't been uh, uh, launched yet and they keep saying like it's upcoming it's upcoming it's upcoming one or the other um but also at the same time um this like this move internally this move internally is is odd uh not in full power yeah Has Ukraine considered calling Mr. Beast to see if he can help? I agree. There were some stories today about new full mobilizations in Ukraine. Most of the equipment hasn't been used yet. Uh, it's believed to be probing attacks currently with 75% of the force sitting in reserve. Uh, the main operational offensive reserves have not been committed. Limited counteroffensive operations have begun and have seen very limited success. It has been launched fully, just not going as well as hoped. Been autistically following this shit since day one. Um, anyway. The fuck? Murat? Unelan? All right, let's just keep and it going. does get stuck, you know, trading a bit of territory. Uh, I think Putin will come out stronger politically, and that will allow him possibly to conduct another wave of mobilization. I think he can only do mobilization successfully at this stage if he can show some success on the battlefield. In the face of losing territory and be and suffering uh, defeats, I think that uh, mobilizing people. Uh, and the elites will actually get a lot harder and we could see more unraveling and more infighting in Russia, which is ex exactly, in a way, what Ukraine and the West want to achieve. Thank you for watching. And if you Мы били по ним, они били по нам. И это происходило все эти долгие 8 лет, с 14 по 22. Иногда нарастало количество различных э, перестрелок, грубо говоря, обмена боеприпасами, обменом выстрелами, иногда уменьшалось. На 24 февраля ничего сверхординарного не было. Сейчас уже Министерство обороны пытается обмануть общественность, пытается обмануть президента и рассказать историю о том, что со стороны Украины была безумная агрессия, и они собирались вместе со всем блоком НАТО на нас напасть. Поэтому спецоперация, так называемая. Can you ask chat if there are viewers in Rostov? My call, my call with my ex just got cut and I can't reach her right now. Our Turkish uh, oiler is asking. 24 февраля она была начата совершенно по другим причинам. Для чего была нужна война? Война нужна была для того, чтобы кучка тварей просто поторжествовала и попиарилась, показав, какая она сильная армия. Чтобы Шойгу получил маршала, и этот указ уже был готов, и получил вторую звезду героя, потому что ему очень хотелось войти в историю, как великий тувинский военачальник, который стал дважды героем и маршалом в фактически мирное время. Война была нужна не для того, чтобы вернуть в наше лона российских граждан, и не, того, не для того, чтобы демилитаризировать и денацифицировать Украину. Она была нужна ради одной звезды с дополнительной вышивкой по периметру, чтобы один человек, психически больной, когда ляжет в гроб, чтобы на подушке принесли эту звезду. Шайгу живет по принципу, чтобы в ложь поверили, она должна быть чудовищная. И поэтому идут обманы. Две реальности. На земле сейчас, на сегодняшний день, российская армия отступает на запорожском, херсонском направлениях. 
В ИСУ продавливают российскую армию. Мы умываемся кровью. Резервы никто не дает. Управления никакого нет. По-прежнему истерики, в которых начальник генштаба после стакана водки визжит, как баба базарная, как свинья, в телефон требуя вернуть позиции. И все, что может сделать командующий, он может сказать, все возвращено, и нарисовать на карте красную полосочку на несколько километров севернее, чем она сегодня <coughs> реально есть. Поэтому то, что нам рассказывают, это глубочайший обман. I mean, basically said that uh, the Russian MOD is bullshit and they're not giving them any resources. They're not giving them resources that they need and that all he all they can do is uh, keep telling them to like take positions when the Ukrainians keep pushing them from certain positions and then and that uh, he's just lying uh, he he ends up lying to them and saying that uh, they we took it when they didn't actually take it because there's nothing that they can do about it um He also said the entire war was to glorify the leaders. I don't really understand this. Um, because can you turn off the strobe on your face? I can't, dude. All the lights in Japan have fucking... All the lights in Japan, are, are they operated like a different frequency or some shit. So it always has like a strobing effect. It happens all the time. Change the camera to 50 hertz shutter. I don't know how to do that. No, not really. What did you say? Let's see. No, no. No, there's no, 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 no. It's not going to be, I, I'm not going to be, uh, in here all day. Uh, uh, flicker rates are different in other countries. So the camera refresh rate is off. Yeah. Japan operates in 50 Hertz chat. Okay. Can't believe full-time streamers don't know about the sitting on camera and why it exists. Ukrainian subscriber here, Progression has always served the same role as one of the radicals. The role is to attract the radical far-right population and keep them under control. Those talking heads are allowed to criticize Putin as they are directly controlled by the FSB. Those people also serve to create a false narrative that Putin is not so bad and should stay in power because more evil people may replace him. So what's happening now? Like, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know. To, like, I, you know, I'll keep it a buck 50. There's like people saying military vehicles are seen uh, as like in Moscow, like beefing up protection in Moscow. It would take a long ass time, I feel like, for a military convoy to reach Moscow if they're coming all the way from Ukraine. News Russian authorities are telling Wagner fighters not to follow their leader, Evgeny Prigozhin, and also to take measures to detain him. That coming as the infamous head of the private Wagner Russian mercenary army is making a stunning claim tonight, accusing Russia's military. It's the army of Moscow, not Wagner. No, I know, I know. I'm saying the army is beefing up support in Moscow uh, out of, I guess, fears of a uh, Wagner retaliation. For Wagner to reach Moscow, uh, if they do have like a 50-kilometer convoy is the way that people are claiming that they do, that's going to like drive all the way, according to Prigozhin, they'll drive all the way and they won't stop until they fucking reach Moscow. Um, 
you know, it would take a long ass time. It would take uh, hours. Here's the alleged video of the Wagner convoy in Rostow. Uh, and the only way that people can get information right now is through telegram channels. In the last ad audio of Prigozhin tells that Gerasimov told airplanes 523 and 546 to bomb the civilian areas. And he said that people of the country will never let this through. Dude, even Turkish people are making fun of my Ukraine prediction. Darbe olmasın imkanı yok de yarın düşsün Putin rejimi. Ahaha. He says, bro, just say there's no shot that a, a coup will actually happen. So tomorrow the Putin regime will fall with a coup. Get it? Because the exact opposite of what I say happens with uh, Russia. Here, I'll say it. There's no way a coup will happen in Russia. I said it. All right, now let's sit back and, and wait. Soviet naval activity and understood that they must... Okay, fucking hell, dude. This goddamn design flaw shit is going to be popping off the leadership nonstop. Of killing a, quote, huge amount... Of I did his it. Wagner forces in a strike. That is a claim that Russia denies. We have CNN's Ben Wiedemann on the ground in Ukraine and our Oren Lieberman monitoring at the Pentagon. Ben, I want to go to you first. What can you tell us about this claim from Pogosian and how Moscow is responding tonight? Well, actually, Alex, that's just one of many claims made by Prigozhin Oji today that's clearly going to get him in trouble. He started the day with an, a video interview in which he claimed that uh, Russia had no pretext uh, for invading Ukraine last year. Then he went on to make this claim uh, that the Russian military leadership, without specifying who or what exactly, attacked a Wagner base killing dozens of his mercenaries. Now, it's not clear where that base is. Some video is circulating in social media of that base. The Russian defense ministry has said that this is simply not true. Uh, the Russian media, Russian state media, is saying that President Putin is being kept aware of these claims by Wagner and the situation in general, and that, quote, all necessary measures are being taken. Now, Prigozhin went went on to say that the evil being carried out by the Russian military leadership must be stopped. Now, many people are taking this as a call for a coup, although Prigozhin went out, came out later and denied it. Now, as a result of this obvious shock of instability hitting Russia, there are reports on social media that military vehicles have been seen outside the state Duma in Moscow, as well as in the city of, of Rostov, Russian city, uh, to the east of here. Now, in reaction to Prigozhin's statements, the FSB, the Russian Federal Security Service, has announced that it has begun criminal proceedings against Prigozhin for organizing armed an armed insurrection. And of, this is, according to the statement from the SSS, FSB, punishable by 12 to 20 years uh, in prison. Now, the Ukrainians are obviously watching this with intense interest. Now, we did see a tweet from the Ukrainian Defense Ministry simply saying, we are watching. Alex? This certainly is an earthquake in uh, Russia's war in Ukraine. Ben Wiedemann, uh, thank you very much. We have new reporting now on the U.S. reaction to this showdown between Russia and the Wagner mercenary group. Here's our Pentagon correspondent, Oren Lieberman. Uh, Oren, what are you being told? I'm not going to lie. There's so much going on. Tune in, the Wagner this is private it. military company for months has been openly accusing Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu and Russia's top general of rank incompetence. Earlier on Friday, the head of Wagner Group said 
that Moscow's forces were retreating in Ukraine's east and south following Kiev's counteroffensive that directly contradicts Putin's account that Ukraine was suffering catastrophic losses and that there was a lull in fighting. The 62-year-old Western-sanctioned businessman is believed to be, to be a close ally of the Russian president. Prigozhin is increasingly seen as keen on a political role as he engages in an all-out war of words with Moscow that appears to have spilled onto the battlefield as well. Shifting our focus for now, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has claimed that Ukrainian spies have received information on how Russia is considering to carry out a terrorist attack at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Zelensky issued a fresh call to put pressure on Russia to end its occupation of the plant. The plant was seized by Russian troops days after the February 2022 invasion of Ukraine. Moscow dismissed Zelensky's allegations of an attack on the plant as another lie. On a Telegram video address, Zelensky also pointed out on the fact that how Russia has formed special groups to collect and hide bodies of people killed in the aftermath of the Kakovka dam breach this month in southern Ukraine. Ukraine and Russia have accused each other of destroying the dam. Okay, let's get back to CNN. More on what one expert has called large red flags that she said. Okay, that's bullshit. All right, let's get back to the... Let's get back to the CIA uh, reaction to the situation. Alex, certainly after Ben laid it all out like They're that, saying, the friction we're seeing between... Oh, Pogoda what I was going to say is like every aspect of this invasion, defense, counteroffensive, maneuvers from Ukraine, maneuvers from uh, Russia have always had like a degree of confusion partially pushed by mainstream media uh, and Russian state media that have their own unique interest in creating informational chaos, information war, ladies and gentlemen. But there's also a lot of elements that keep uh, refusing to do what like uh, either side's, uh, either side's command, uh, either side's commanders tell them to do. What do I mean by this? Like, the Nord Stream pipeline explosion. It feels like, it feels like even on the Ukrainian side, they're sometimes just going, nah, we're just going to do whatever the fuck we want to do. Like, fuck you guys. Or even the Crimean bridge uh, suicide bomb attack. Like, America will every now and then just like release statements from the State Department saying, yeah, we didn't really want Ukraine to do this, by the way, but it seems like they're just operating on their own volition. Now, obviously, America still has a tremendous amount of control over Ukraine, but it is very interesting seeing this. Uh, it is very interesting seeing, like, Ukrainian operatives do whatever the fuck they want to in many instances, even against the uh, better judgment of the American, uh, the American military. And it seems like a similar thing is happening on the Russian side as well, I feel like the Russian level of control, like Putin's level of control over Wagner and everything else happening in Russia is significantly higher than obviously America's control over Ukrainian actions. But um, I don't know. I, I, I just don't know what the outcome of this will be. I don't know how Hassan realizing Ukraine is a different country. What? No, I thought, no. For me, I thought uh, Ukraine was... Uh, just a part of Turkey, actually, up until recently. I just found out it's a it's a different country. I don't know why you just said that. Like, I don't really understand uh, what purpose that serves. Ocean and the Russian military leadership. It's easy to see why U.S. officials are watching this so closely and are tracking this so closely to see how this develops. The U.S. has watched and we have watched friction between the two in the past. Threats coming from Prigozhin aimed either at the Russian military or its leadership, Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu or the Chief of pee. General Staff Valery Gerasimov. But one U.S. official tells us there is a sense here that this goes above and beyond that. This isn't the usual rhetoric. There is something different here. There is something perhaps more escalatory here. And that's one of the reasons the U.S. is watching this so closely to see how this develops over the course of the next several hours and days. It's also worth pointing out that Prigozhin has normally 
uh, attacked Russian military leadership following some Ukrainian battlefield success or breakthrough or tactical success, and it doesn't appear to be the case here. There doesn't appear to have been some sort of Ukrainian success that, that precipitated these sudden threats by Prigozhin, and yet we have seen this friction with what appears to be an increasing frequency. In fact, just early last week, Russia's Ministry of Defense said that private contractors, military contractors, would have to sign contracts to try to bring them in line with Russian military leadership and the Russian military itself. And it was Prigozhin who said that Wagner would not be doing that. And so you see that leading into this friction here as the U.S. watches this, Alex. Yeah, the U.S. and certainly the rest of NATO are going to be watching this very, very closely. Orrin Lieberman at the Pentagon, thanks very much. Let's get more now with our military and Russia experts, uh, Colonel uh, Cedric Layton and Dmitry Alperovich. Thank you both for joining me. Dmitry, I want to go to you first. You say that Prigozhin massively overreached today. You're comparing this to gang warfare. Uh, this is very different than what Prigozhin has said before. It is an escalation. What do you think is behind it? Well, what Prigozhin has been doing for months now is criticizing, of course, the Ministry of Defense, Minister Shoigu, uh, Chief of General Staff Gerasimov for being incompetent, trying to draw a distinction between his own capable Wagner forces that were able to take Bakhmut by destroying it and uh, the Russian military that has been uh, suffering loss after loss. But what he couldn't do, and, and the big mistake that he made today, is to go after the pretext for this war. When he announced that this war was launched under false pretenses, he blamed Shoigu for it, but everyone knows that Putin is the one that ultimately made the decision. And thus, he gave the opening to, for Shoigu and others uh, that have hated him for a long time in the Kremlin apparatus, as well as in the FSB, to go after him. And Colonel Layton, as Dimitri noted there, this is a feud that has been brewing for quite some time. Uh, Prigozhin has been lobbing those bombs for, for months. But how do you assess this claim that Prigozhin made that Russian forces, the Russian military, actually targeted and killed many Wagner mercenaries, as Prigozhin claimed? Yeah, Alex, that's a very inflammatory claim under almost any condition that you can imagine. So, uh, you know, what Prigozhin seems to be doing here is upping the ante. He's basically saying uh, this, uh, you know, this this area has... Uh... So basically what anti-MOD -MO but pro-war people who are on the same side of Prigozhin is saying right now is that there are no proof of anything happening. If nothing would happen in two to three hours, then he would have no chance to do anything. Also, they all agree that he was afraid to lose his positions, and that's why... Uh, that's why that happened so early. I don't know what you mean by that. Are you trying to say? Are you trying to say that? Uh, uh, show. Are you saying that Prigozhin was afraid to lose his position, so he's like uh, facilitating some kind of like coup? Or are you talking about uh, Shoigu? Uh, because that's what uh, Prigozhin is saying. Uh were you Googling if Ukraine is indeed its own country? Also, is that your favorite T-shirt? Yes, that's what I was doing. All while this is happening, it seems like, uh, is, is Ukraine being bombed mercilessly too? Like, while this shit's happening? So I don't really understand what the fuck... The, I, I don't really understand what's going on. So, like, how? What? It's gone way beyond what uh, I've intended. Uh, it's gone way beyond what the Russian state uh, should be doing, and the Russian state has killed its own people. Uh, so that, uh, you know, is a very significant, uh, I think, departure from the messages that we've seen from Prigozhin before. It's much more virulent, uh, much more uh, really part of a campaign that seems to be uh, to, uh, designed to topple the Ministry of Defense, at the very least, and possibly Putin himself. But I don't think it will be successful. So, Colonel, what are you going to be watching for now as the FSB is calling on Wagner fighters to detain Prigozhin? Well, I'm going to be watching for exactly that, Alex, whether or not the, the Wagner forces remain loyal to Prigozhin or whether they switch allegiance uh, to Putin and, and Shoigu. Uh, we've had uh, generals uh, come up on social media that have urged uh, the Wagner group to actually uh, disband and to actually 
uh, detain, as you mentioned, Prigozhin. We've also had, uh, you know, other members call for a uh, calm in this situation. And of course, the broadcasts on state television have been, uh, I think, a very significant departure from uh, what we've normally seen when it comes to these kinds of spats. So I'm going to be watching for uh, these kinds of tensions to unfold and whether or not Prigozhin uh, stays a, fr a free man. Dimitri, same question to you. What do you expect the next moves to be? Well, what you're seeing right now is armored vehicles being deployed on the streets of Moscow for the first time since the early 1990s, uh, out of fear, of course, that uh, Wagner may have supporters that may help them uh, orchestrate a coup. So Putin does not want to take any chances. He's deploying not just the FSB and the Russian military, but the Rosgvardia and the National Guard, effectively his Praetorian Guard, uh, hundreds of thousands of men that have armor, that are uh, very loyal to him. So he's got the overwhelming advantage here. I don't expect that Prigozhin and Wagner would be successful here. I don't even expect that they would survive the weekend um, or at least uh, remain free men. Uh, but uh, it's certainly interesting that Putin is very concerned, perhaps for the first time in his presidency, about uh, a potential for a coup. Dimitri, have you seen fractures within Wagner? Would you expect Wagner fighters to heed that call to arrest Prigozhin? I'm not sure if they would arrest him, but certainly if you're a Wagner personnel right now, the last thing you want to do is either be killed by the Russian military and the Roskvardia or be arrested and then potentially be sent again to fight in Ukraine now as a convict yet again. So uh, not a lot of good choices for them. Um, most of them, I would expect, would probably try to disappear and, and try to get home. Uh, Colonel Layton, uh, do you agree with, with Dmitry that uh, Prigozhin's life is now at risk? Absolutely, Alex. I think Dimitri's spot on in this in this case because what you're looking at is not only a power play, but it seems to be a power play done by someone who is not quite ready. Uh, in terms of the forces that he has at his disposal to actually mount a coup or other, uh, you know, other type of action of that type. Uh, so I don't think he'll be successful, and I think uh, that uh, his demise may be coming up very shortly. And, Dimitri, in terms of what could happen uh, in the coming weeks and days, we're in the middle of this counteroffensive. Putin has acknowledged challenges uh, during this period. Do you think that these developments make it more difficult for Putin to, to spin the realities uh, of how his forces are, are doing on the ground? I don't think so. I think he can present this as a rogue uh, 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 paramilitary uh, contractor, Prigozhin, uh, that is uh, trying to actually not even orchestrate a coup against Putin. He's been very careful to promote his support of Putin. He's saying that he wants to clean the uh, Russian military and, and the general staff off of, uh, you know, the traitors that he call, as he calls them, that, that are just uh, destroying the Russian military in Ukraine. Um, and he doesn't necessarily want to stop the war. He just thinks that he can prosecute it better. But look, uh, Alex, uh, the way you orchestrate successful coups is not by announcing them far in advance, especially against a state that controls the military, controls the security services, has enormous firepower. You try to do it quietly and then announce that you've been successful. So Prigozhin is doing this completely backwards, and that's why he's very likely to fail. <sighs> How large is the Wagner group? I don't know. I thought it was like... 20,000. I mean, it's larger than the Wagner group is larger than other private military groups for sure. Some are saying 50,000. Some are saying 25,000. The other important question is how many in the Russian MOD are sympathetic to Wagner? Uh, off topic, did you finally have a good sleep high from Costa Rica? I did. I definitely did have a better sleep tonight. Friend, a triple action blend to help. Um, not long ago, Shogi signed the order so all the Wagner fighters and all the other unofficial fighters signed a contract with the Russian official. Uh, fighters, I used, it used to be at 50k after Bakhmut is 25k, 10k trained contractors, 40,000 convicts. This seems like a nothing story. Yeah, here's the thing. We don't know what the fuck's going on. It seems like uh, the Ukrainian uh, 
the the Ukrainian side of the uh, battle on the Russian front, at least, is can is happening. Uh, it, it's it's still it's still ongoing. It's not like it's not like they're uh, it's not like Russia's offensive posturing has like been turned down um because that would at least indicate some level of um that would indicate some level of of retreating and and uh you know possible like real internal struggle um but that hasn't happened as far as i understand it so it's it's a nothing burger now until it it's a nothing burger now until it becomes a something burger, if that makes sense. It's a weird thing to explain, but um, as it stands, we don't know. Uh, there isn't enough evidence. We just don't fucking know what's going on. <clears throat> Uh, Prigozhin has always been in conflict with the Russian army. He is not in the system per se. He was mainly working abroad, making money for Putin by racketeering, oil and gas, diamond gold mines. Putin was most likely using those tensions to his own benefit, as he always does to serve a role between a referee and uh, serve a role or a referee between the elite's interests. Twenty five K people is not enough to take multiple cities. No, I, I know. I don't think that anybody thinks that like uh, they have a shot. I think it's more so about letting the army stand down. You know what I mean? Russian here, there's not much in just in this case, but it's huge for Putin ratings and country in a negative way. He positioned himself for old population as a father and man in control who always knows everything now after mobilization, his position shakes. So I don't, I don't know. Um, here we'll do the we'll do the submarine story, Eating the submersible against story. Him. And so this incredible tension that we've all been witnessing. Let's look at an update from CNN, and then we'll move on to the submersible story and the Emma Viglin uh, Tim Pool face off. And we'll I'll I'll uh, give you more updates when uh, you know. It's so happening. Matthew, I mean, what are his what are his options? What are what what power? I mean, obviously he has Wagner forces uh, who I guess are under his control. I mean, not sure if in a showdown with the Kremlin who they would side with. But I know he's talked about marching on Moscow. What what, what could can he actually do? I mean, it's it's well. I mean, we're we're in uncharted waters at this point. But you're you're right. Yevgeny Prigozhin has about <sighs> twenty five thousand men who are you know at this point are very battle hardened as well, who are apparently um, still under his his command. Although, of course, when it comes to an order to march against the uh, Russian Defense Ministry, it's not clear how many of them, if any at all, would actually comply with, with, with that kind of, of, of command. Certainly, Russian generals have come out on, on state media, uh, launching statements. What is this fucking screen size, my dude? What's wrong with my screen size? What are you talking about? I heard another person say this as well. What's happening? Check your live stream. It's fine. The bar at the bottom? What bar? There's no bar at the bottom. I think you guys are...
I think you guys are saying, uh, you guys are seeing a glitch or something. I think they're saying the taskbar is showing. The taskbar always shows on this computer. I'm on a new computer. And it's certainly uh, fascinating. And it's going to get a little bit sporty here, I think, in the near future, because part of Wagner's forces under Pergoisin have allegedly been marching. And there seems to be uh, indicators on film of them marching, as Matthew just said, into the southern oblast uh, of, uh, of Rostov on Don. What's fascinating about that is they are coming off of the front lines in the Donbass and in the southern areas of Herston and Zaporizhia. What is more important uh, is the number of Russian generals, to include General Savoyskin, who have been on telegram channels talking about uh, telling the Russian, or excuse me, telling the Wagner Group soldiers to put down their weapons, get back to the front. They are uh, at the zero line, as Russia likes to call their final defenses, prepared to defend against the Ukrainian attacks. And they're giving them that kind of speech while at the same time uh, sending these messages on, on telegram channels. And one of the generals, I'll, I'll mention Savoy. Pretty sure you, that's on your end. You might be in like theater mode or something. As a young officer in, in 1993. So he was one of the guys that was put in jail by Yeltsin after the coup attempt or by uh, Gorbachev when he actually fired on the Russian Moscow White House, the, the location of the parliament. So this is another just kind of the craziness of personalities inside of the Kremlin, inside of the Russian military, with these private military uh, organizations that are doing the bid, bidding of Putin and sometime get out of his control. But it all comes at a very fascinating time when Ukrainian forces are just beginning to gain momentum in their offensive operations in the same locations where Russian troops are needed. So this whole Prigozhin action tonight uh, and the reaction by the Russian generals are, uh, are probably, it's probably causing huge morale problems within the Russian senior military, military hierarchy while also confusing the bejesus out of the Russian soldiers on the front lines. Uh, couldn't have happened at a more inopportune time for, for Russia, but a very opportune time for Ukraine. One last thing I'll mention, just to throw another wrinkle into this, and Matthew can comment on this. Every military operation that Russia does has an element of what they call Moskarovka, or deception. And it's, you know, the fact that there's so many people on Telegram channels and on the Internet proclaiming this could all be a demonstration or a ruse. I doubt it. I would think that the U.S. White House, and, and it's been said that, that uh, they know what's going on, and I would almost bet they know more than what, than what the Russians know going on in the southern oblast. Uh, they're watching this very closely to see exactly what is imploding and what may... They're saying that, what, that uh, the Wagner group shot down a Russian helicopter that was shooting at them, but then the Russian MOD is saying that that's not real. There's so much misinformation happening and everyone has their own perspective on it and their own, uh, everyone has their own like dog in the fight per se. So they're just operating off of, what the fuck? Why, how do I fix this fucking thing? Uh, everyone is just like making it up as they go Enforces along. Forces around Bakhmut, which has been of course, a meat grinder of a battle uh, over the past several months. Um, Ukrainian forces 34 are now, they MKD say, 50 trying to take with another hundred gifted subs Jesus and have launched Christ. new offensive in that offensives in that area of the front line. And so, yes, it's not an opportune moment for the Russians, but it may be an opportunity uh, for Ukrainian forces to gain some sort of advantage. And they're certainly looking for opportunities like that in this counter offensive. Yeah, Matthew Chan, Sean Hurtling, thank you so much. We'll continue to follow this. Just ahead, also, a CNN investigation about another tragedy at sea, this time off the coast of Greece. Hundreds of migrants are missing after their vessel capsized and sank last week. Survivors who spoke with CNN questioned the official account of the shipwreck, raising the question of whether the Greek Coast Guard is actually to blame. Details next. What the fuck? All right, let's move on to the fucking... Uh, let's move on to the submarine.